novel in the time of the butterflies the story of the mirabelle sisters is retold through each sister's perspective spanning across the decades and it's essentially a frame story so a reporter comes to Dede's house the surviving sister on the anniversary of her three sisters accidental deaths and Dede then talks with the reporter and the main story jumps back in time to the 1940s the four sisters patria Dede. Um, Minerva and Maria Teresa guide the reader through the troubles they dealt with, um, being involved with the rebellion, as well as their pleasant experiences they've had growing up. And we learn of Minerva's time in boarding school where she meets a girl named Sunita. And this girl tells Minerva all the tea about the Trujillo dictatorship and all the shady stuff that goes on in the government. And this basically is like a catalyst for Minerva's involvement in the rebellion. And this basically gets her family involved in this whole uprising. And as the story unfolds, we learn more about how the other sisters get involved and how the dictatorship impacts their lives and in the end terminates them. For this novel, the application of the gender criticism works best. The very existence of the sisters, codenamed Mariposa, in the rebellion shows the contrast between their peaceful, docile mascots and their active role in the political sphere. As women in a male-dominated society, the sisters' involvement in the attempted overthrow of the dictatorship is game-changing. In regards to the specific individual sisters, Patria, the eldest sister, takes on a priestly role in the family and her community. This power, however, is denied to her in the church which she loves so dearly because of her gender. Minerva is the first to involve herself in the rebellion and takes it upon herself to educate herself in the dangers of the Trujillo regime. Her participation in the underground uprising, as well as her attempted career in law, is contradictory of the standards placed upon her by the patriarchy. The book also highlights the disparity in power between genders in the secular world, providing a gripping parallel to the modern Me Too movement. At the di dinner party to which the Mirabal family is invited, Trujillo makes many subtle and not so subtle advances toward Minerva, employing his power and status in an attempt to coerce her into political silence and having sex with him. Though Trujillo's blatant harassment and sexual insinuations Alvarez provides commentary on the effects of power in terms of to toxic masculinity. Continuing with the gender critique, other works address issues such as gender, expectations, and conformity. In Henrik Ibsen's play A Doll's House, the wife, Nora, is the definition of a traditional housewife. She has an epiphany and realizes her potential as an individual apart from her husband. She breaks traditional gender roles by taking control of her own life and finances, something her husband is expected to do for her. This connects with In the Time of the Butterflies through the fact that the Mirabal sisters' participation in the revolution is contradictory of their societal expectations. They, too, transgress the boundaries of their prescribed feminine duty. In contrast, the story of Sense and Sensibility depicts women in their conventional capacities swooning over men and only having trivial conversations. This work serves as a reminder of what women are fighting to change. So basically what we're going to analyze right now is the shifting perspective of the book. It's a really unique feature of this book. Each chapter is told from each of the sisters' perspectives. And I think it really gives the reader an idea of the sisters' connection to one another, which also establishes how they're able to get involved in such an extreme rebellion. Yeah, absolutely. Characterization is such an important part of this novel. And having the story told from these different perspectives of all the different sisters really helps to inform our own perspective of them both as individuals and their own character traits and as a group. Julia, what do you think about the use of Maria Teresa's like, letter writing style in the book? I think it's really effective, especially since it's from her diary, which makes it seem a lot more personal. And it's really like a different perspective into her own thoughts. Mm -hmm. I thought the epistolary style of Mate's chapters were very illuminating on her character as a person you know she's a little bit of the odd one out she's so much younger than the rest of her sisters but that could have resulted in us not knowing her as well but the much more personal style of her chapters really help us get into the head of her character so lastly we're going to talk about kind of our review our kind of little you know yelp review of this book it definitely appeals to teenagers um because of the used to like the girls in the story i think you're definitely appealing to teenage girls more than teenage guys but i think teenage guys obviously could still be interested in it i think it teaches a really good lesson about femininity and standing up for what you believe in so it's a really good influence for especially teenage girls but boys can definitely learn from it too yeah the style of this book 
is very relevant to its literary merit, right? Like this style is very novel. It's always changing. And just the versatility that Alvarez shows and being able to write from the perspective of all the different characters, it's really groundbreaking. And I think that especially young writers can learn a lot from it. Este, este, este Talk Notes, este Talk Notes, ¿qué? ¿Qué, qué es esa vaina? Que estamos grabando este proyectón del carajo, ¿qué carajo estamos haciendo? ¿Qué coño? Me dije que me calme, yo estoy bien manso, bien manso nena, quiere que me calme pero estoy manso.